What's up, everybody? I'm David Hain. Welcome to episode 196 of the A to D from Addict to Disciple podcast. If you enjoy this podcast, please like, subscribe, follow, and share the link with your friends. And speaking of friends, how about getting two friends to listen to this episode and then chat with them about it? If you'd like to get our curriculum, you can get the paperback or ebook of From Ashes to Destiny on Amazon. When we come back, we'll get into this episode entitled Revolving Door. Welcome back to episode 196 of the ATD from Attic to Disciple podcast entitled Revolving Door. This episode is in response to messages I've received from guys who said, David, I can get clean, but I just can't seem to stay clean. You see, David, every time I try to get clean and give recovery a chance, I find out every door that's available to me is a revolving door. I feel trapped in this cycle. It didn't even take anything to trigger me because I've only stepped into a revolving door. I don't seem to know how to step through the door and find my way to freedom. And they'll say, why should I expect that this time will be any different? It's like as soon as I step into the revolving door, a blindfold is put on my eyes and I can't see any way forward. Shaw. That's a common thing that I've heard a lot and I I really feel for you guys caught in that. And I'd like to Compare it to a quote by Franz Kafka. This thing of the the blindfold being put on with the revolving door. He said, If a man has his eyes bound, you can encourage him as much as you like to stare through the bandage, but he'll never see anything. And I run into that so much because when guys feel stuck in this revolving door, it is like the blindfold is on there and it's really really difficult for friends family counselors coaches you name it for any of us to really encourage someone when they've got that blindfold of the revolving door on to see a way to freedom to see a way to get away from the drugs away from the porn away from the alcohol whatever the addiction is And I believe that this revolving door phenomenon happens because we start recovery from a place of instability in our life. Think about that. Think back to the times that you tried to start recovery before and how unstable you were when you started. So one of the keys is how do we do something different this time? How do we do something different next time to be stable when we start and to avoid the revolving door so we don't have that blindfold on? Well, of all places, I turn to something on Twitter by at accrued growth called the four stages of wealth. So I'm going to use their four stages of wealth, but then look at them as four stages of starting a recovery that can last. The first stage is stability. And in this, they say for wealth, it means no debt, our bills are paid, and our savings are funded. But the question is, in recovery, how do we establish stability early on? Well, it's important then to think about, am I doing this alone? And knowing that I shouldn't be doing it alone. And really, I shouldn't be doing it to prove anything to anyone else either. I need to be doing it for myself. I can't be doing it to win anything back that I lost in addiction. And I shouldn't be starting recovery in hopes of starting a new relationship or because I'm just starting a new relationship so I better get clean quickly before they find out. You see that the evidence of stability from the four stages of wealth says it's no debt, bills are paid, and savings are funded. So 
do we start recovery with stability if our debts are paid? That means no one is coming after us for money or drugs that we owe them. And our bills are paid. No one's going to come after us for a promise we broke. And our savings are funded. And I'd like to compare that to we start recovery with at least our first month paid in full. And I'm not talking about money there. I'm really saying, you know, our debts are paid. We're, we're not being hounded by people for broken promises. And we've got some, some stability to at least say, yeah, I can make it through the first month rather than all of those things where we say, oh, I can't go away for a month. I'll lose my car. I'll lose my house. I'll lose my apartment. I'll lose my job whatever. Okay. The second stage of wealth is called strategy. And this says it's the time of investing and when your money works for you. So think about developing a strategy to maintain your recovery where you're investing in yourself and your recovery works for you. It can't be living day to day in hope that today's sobriety pays for tomorrow's strength to stay clean. It has to be that our money works for us, that every decision we make to say no to temptation makes us stronger. And this reminds me of Oscar Wilde's quote, who said, I can resist anything except temptation. You got that? He used a paradox to highlight how easily we give in to tempting things while imagining that we can hold firm and resist them. So tomorrow's decisions, if our strategy is right, are easier because of today's choices. That every day in recovery, we're getting further and further away from relapse because we're learning that we can resist our temptations. And we see our recovery as a journey of going somewhere, of moving ahead, not just staying in the same place and having to find the strength every day as if it's our first day. Okay, the third step for wealth is security. And in this one they say, enjoy your money, eat good food, and travel. Well, that's an interesting phase in recovery. It's when we begin to get secure enough in our strength and growth to really begin to enjoy life again. This phase does not mean enjoying dipping and dabbing in our drug of choice. It means enjoying life, seeing addiction and relapse as death, and celebrating how far we've come from the precipice of death. It includes realizing, acknowledging, and accepting that we have played on, lived on, this precipice of death while either feeling invincible or not caring if we die today or being totally oblivious to the reality that we could die with our next high. This acceptance means we will not become complacent or contented. And remember Socrates said, this is a good quote, remember this one, he who is not contented with what he has will not be contented with what he would like to have. You got that? So in this security phase, part of the key of enjoying life again is to begin to and be content at what we have because if we can't be content in this phase of recovery, we're not going to be content with where we hope it takes us. The fourth phase for this strategy of wealth says it's freedom. And in this phase, they say money is not an issue and the quality of life triumphs our cost. Well, true freedom from addiction, from temptation, from feeling that we deserve the right to use now and again, from keeping reservations open at the counterfeit comfort of hotel where we can go get high at any time, 
we need to cancel all those and walk in freedom. As this step says, money is not the issue. So the ability to use again or the desire to use again should not be where we're focused. We need to reach the point where numbing the normal expected pains in life are not an issue. We've learned to talk through and process our pain. We have a strong support system and we use it. We know that we know that we know that relapse will cost us everything. It's a matter of life and death and we choose life and that our quality of life trumps everything. As we get to a close in this episode, I'd like to give you a quote by Henry David Thoreau. He said, what you get by achieving your goals is not as important as what you become by achieving your goals. So it's important to remember that recovery is a lifelong journey. And it's one that is a journey of transformation, of character development, of really birthing a new you. And it this journey is one where every night, every temptation, every choice we have, we need to realize, hold on a second here, I've still got miles to go on this journey. And so to paraphrase what Thoreau said, what's important is what you become as you stay on the journey to your goals, to a life of recovery. We need to stay focused on that, what you become as you stay on the journey to your goals, to a life of recovery. And I'd like to close with the poem by Robert Frost. It's his most famous one in my mind, written in 1922, Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening. Whose woods are these, I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near. Between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only other sounds the sweep of easy wind and downy flake. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. So I'd like to encourage you to stay on your journey. Don't linger too long when you're distracted, when the snow is falling as you're going about your journey and you just want to admire it. Listen for the harness bells to shake and hear them as a wake-up call to get moving again. Even though the woods and the falling snow are lovely, you have miles to go before you sleep. Thanks for listening to this episode of the A to D from Addict to Disciple podcast. If you were saying, you know, that's me, I get stuck in that revolving door a lot. Or when I think I'm making it, I am that one who stops by to admire things and gets distracted and I forget that I've got miles to go before I sleep. I want to encourage you to reach out and join a group. You can message me in the link in this podcast or by email at david from a to d at gmail.com or you can go to my website www.fromatod.org and click on the contact page. Tune in Monday for our next episode and as always, stay safe and stay resilient. <music>